differently. So let's look at what is VV ECMO. So VV ECMO is for patients who are experiencing respiratory failure. VV ECMO is not for patients that are experiencing any type of um, cardiac failure. And so it principally, the VV ECMO device, the, uh, the circuit itself, functions as an artificial lung with no direct sub circulatory support. And I will say the reason I underline that, no direct circulatory support, it's not helping the cardiac ejection or function at all. The only support that some people will claim uh, from a VV ECMO is that the increased oxygenation that we're providing that then makes its way to the coronary arteries, which it wasn't doing before, that increased oxygenation coming down the coronary arteries sometimes improves and acts as an indirect uh, con a positive contributor to circulatory function. Mm -hmm. But it is actually not, as of a device itself, contributing anything to the circulatory support. That is a great point. And, and actually, I threw some slides together for my talk, and I, that's, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, some people don't think about that. So VV ECMO, again, is basically indicated in patients with severe respiratory failure that's refractory to optimal mechanical ventilation and medical therapy. That's the basic concept. When you've already exhausted your maximum ventilator support and maximum pharmacological support and your patient is still uh, failing pulmonary-wise, VV ECMO is the, uh, is the stop, 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 stop measure there. For the goal of VV ECMO, now this is a take home message for people who don't do ECMO terribly a lot. The goal of VV ECMO is to oxygenate at least 60% of the patient's cardiac output. And it you po quite possibly could be more than that, but the reason I point this out is that when you're selecting cannulas, and we're going to talk about cannulas here shortly, when you're selecting the size of the cannula, you should do a quick assessment of your patient's cardiac output and see if you're going to be able to flow and capture with the cannulas you're inserting 60% of the patient's cardiac output. See, 40% of it is gonna get past the cannulas in this case, and you're not gonna be oxygenating that 40%. And it's left to the lungs to contribute something, or maybe they don't contribute anything at all. 